All right, ladies and gents, welcome to today's video. My name is Taylor Venture, and I wanna to talk to you today about the biggest threats that I think your agency is gonna face once you get into the seven figure range slash past 100,000 a month. Okay, so important video because the biggest threats you face are constantly changing, and as you scale, um, yeah, this is what happens, it changes. And I wanna kinda of walk through what I think they are for us in our agency right now. And hopefully this will be of value to you. And I think these are also important things to think about early on. So high turnover is number one. Uh, this is basically losing uh, your team members, okay? So people you hire end up leaving you within a year. That will slow you down tremendously. And our agency hasn't really seen any turnover yet because rapid like scale kind of just kicked in last year. And uh, we hired, I think, three or four, three, maybe three account executives uh, last year, and we hired two in the last uh, month. So yeah, high turnover, it's something that's on my mind 24 seven. And I know that if we can't keep people like happy and constantly growing within the company and wanting to stay within this company, ideally for five plus years, we're gonna have trouble scaling, especially because we're a very people-centric company. I, I say we a lot, but an agency in general is very people-centric, there's people-oriented. So that one's the number one, and I think that one's huge, and it's a huge problem for a lot of different agencies, okay? And by the way, I just wanna say that ugh, the people we hire, generally speaking, generally speaking, have come from agencies that had bad culture and so they wanted to leave and it's that simple so that's kind of how i know that this stems from bad culture it's not always the case but most times it is especially if someone's leaving after a year of being at the company number two getting fat and comfy okay look i was working insane hours when it was just me and the agency and uh, i would say i work a little bit less now and yeah, part of me is like, shit, am I getting comfy or is my productivity levels just higher? In general, as you start to scale, you as the, I guess, entrepreneur and uh, founder, if you're watching this video and that's you, you will probably hit a point where you're gonna be like, ooh, I'm really happy with this level. And uh, the faster you can snap out of that and fixate your mind on the next level, the better. I think a lot of people kind of get comfy at a certain level, whatever it is. It's kind of just a, a level that will be specific to or subjective to the person that uh, is running the agency, I guess, and all the people within the agency. It's not just you as the founder. So you, you got to really try to avoid getting fat and comfy. Yes, it's great. Once you get to a new level, celebrate that but uh, then start working your ass off to get to the next level very quickly. Uh, don't relish in your victory of reaching 100K per month and, and then just stay at 100K per month for, for years to come. That's boring. And uh, that's also why a lot of people will leave a certain company is because they may have been growing quickly at one period, but that growth slowed down tremendously and now the progression of roles within the company is also slowed down because if a company is not growing, the people within the company aren't really growing either. Isn't that an interesting thing to think about? So scaling your company is very important, not just so that you can make money, not just so that you can get to the next level, but so that everybody in your team can get to the next level, including you yourself and uh, all of you can become ex exponentially more valuable only when the company is scaling because it opens up new growth opportunities, new learning opportunities, new role opportunities. You learn so much more, okay? Believe me, if, if I was working in an agency that went from 100,000 to $110,000 per month in the course of a year versus working for a different agency that went from 100,000 to 300,000 in a year, who do you think I'm gonna learn more at? Probably the company that 3X'd opposed to 10% increased, okay? So don't get fat and comfy. Uh, move on to the next level as soon as you hit uh, your little goal, but make sure to celebrate. Not thinking big enough. Wow, this one is on my list. You can tell this is a personal list here. I think that uh, we think 
pretty big, but I think we could think bigger. And um, yeah, just reading good books will help with this. I was recently reading a good book that was something to do with Amazon's operating system, some book about Amazon and uh, very, very beautiful book. And it made me think a lot bigger about what we can accomplish inside of our agency. And um, it's much bigger than what we're currently doing now. And, it's, and I think that you can always challenge yourself to think bigger. So that's an important thing because you got to 100,000 a month, why can't you get to 10 million a month? And why can't you do that in like five years? And how could you do that, etc. So think bigger. And uh, generally speaking, when you think bigger, good or greater, more powerful questions will come out of that and more powerful conversations. So not proactively optimizing culture. This is a threat because uh, if you kind of just hire people and then give them some SOPs and some training and, and that's it. And you think that that person's role is like, that's it. They're, they're an account executive, that's all they're gonna do. And uh, great, N next time we need another account executive, we're gonna hire another account executive. Next time we need another virtual assistant, we're gonna hire another virtual assistant. Next time we need this, we're gonna do this. And if you're like laser focused on like the bottlenecks and like optimizing that and just looking at everything as cogs in a machine and not actually looking at the environment that the machine is in because the machine is your agency but it's in in it's in an environment right it's, it's not just like in this isolated vacuum it operates within an environment and the air quality affects the machine how the heat the temperature of the room affects the machine what i'm getting at here is this is culture the space around the machine that is your culture and um, you can't just look at the machine itself. You also need to look at the environment the machine that is in, and that's the culture. So you really need to try to proactively optimize your culture. This is an ongoing 24-7 process that's never going to end. And uh, make sh making sure that you're trying to nudge the culture into the direction that you want and that you put a lot of time and energy into thinking about the kind of culture that you want. Because if you don't, well, how are you going to know how to proactively optimize it? How are you going to know to incentivize certain behaviors that you want? How are you going to know to disincentivize, I think that's a word, to, to basically you know, prevent certain uh, things from happening, right? If you, if you want this kind of culture and this happens, well, then you know that this could be good or bad. Like Only once you've defined the goal of this is what I want, then you know what's good, then you know what's bad. If you haven't defined this, you don't know what is good from bad. So you need to define the culture, except for the obvious things, like someone you know, completely drops the ball and uh, forgets to email a client and the client leaves. Like That stuff is fine, that's all very easy to understand, but I'm talking about other things that are more between the lines. Um, and you'll start to see these things. It's hard to come up with actual examples and off the top of my head, but culture is a big one. So not proactively optimizing culture is another big threat. All right, now this is the controllable ones. I think you can control those four, and those are the four that I seem to think about um, quite a bit, and I, I worry about, it's a healthy level of um, worry and anxious or anxiety, I guess you could say. It's, it's a healthy amount of worry, and I'm not like freaking out to the point where I can't take action. But here's the ones that you can't control, um, and that are far less within your control. Uh, pandemic, like that is huge, right? That's That's like massive. And it's, I don't know when the last worldwide pandemic was that required complete lockdown and shutdown. I don't know if there's ever been such a thing. So to this scale, you know, there's gonna be certain things you can't necessarily control and you need to understand that those potentially might happen. Now a pandemic has happened. So I'm assuming a lot of business owners are gonna think very differently. And the best thing you can do prefer, prepare, pre to prepare, the best thing you can do to prepare for a crazy situation that is primarily you know environmentally within the weather or not weather but uh, within the planet i guess you could say due to viruses or weather or anything else cat catastrophe type stuff you know the best thing you can do is just hoard cash <laughs> I can't really say it any other way. I mean, that's really the best thing that will save you in a time of crisis is cash. So cash is king. And that's why you can't just uh, operate at 2% profit margin. You need to have some cash in the bank. It's going to save your life. It's going to save your life 
when something like this happens. So uh, cash kind of is the only solution to things that aren't really within your control. And uh, that's all I can say to that side of the coin, okay? Now, if you think I missed some points here, great, let me know in the comment section below. I'm not perfect, I'm far from it. And likely I did miss a lot of big threats, but these are the four that came to my mind when I was making this video. Hopefully you found this valuable and you also can now think about these four things. If you're close to $100,000 a month, if you're doing $40,000, $50,000 a month, you're on your way to $100,000. If you're already doing $250,000, $500,000, and uh, this is still in alignment with you at that level of revenue per month, great. <laughs> I imagine these things aren't going to really change if we get to two fifty dollars or $500,000 per month. Um, that's it. All right, guys, much love. Let me know if you like this video. Hit the like button if you did. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like this video. I'm not offended. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And last but not least, you already know what I'm going to say. Just please hit the subscribe button. It's the only thing I ask for you to do on this channel. Try to make free, great videos and good content on how to help you scale your agency. <laughs> and basically, I just talk about things that are on my mind. So much love, guys. I'll see you on Friday. Ciao.